فعاش القلب وإخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روبا الخير الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله وأعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له هو رب العالمين وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه وخليله وخيرته من خلقه صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى الآل والصحب الكرام أما بعد فاتقوا الله عباد الله واتقوا يوما ترجعون فيه إلى الله ثم توفى كل نفس ما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون My brothers and sisters in Islam it is important that we become more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything we do, everything we say in our lives. It is only through the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will be able to achieve closeness to our own maker and creator. The only thing that makes us different is taqwa. It is the consciousness of Allah. Some might interpret it as the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is one thing we always need to remind each other about. It is something that will definitely develop us. When we become conscious of Allah, we become conscious of preparing for the day that we will be meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let this worldly life not deceive you. Yes, as much as we would love to see success in this dunya and in this worldly life, we would also love to see success in the akhirah. And for this reason, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the dua in Surah Al-Baqarah, He includes the issue of this world as well as the grave and the akhirah. And this is who He terms is successful from among those who call out to Him. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ From amongst those who call out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who say, O oh our Rabb, grant us goodness in this world, grant us, grant us goodness in the hereafter, and protect us from the punishment. The punishment of the fire. So that is ultimate success. However, my brothers and sisters, what we need to remember is what builds us in this world. The Prophet ﷺ speaks about as an answer to a question he was asked by the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. One day he was asked, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam, who are the people who will be entering Jannah? Obviously, I would like to know. I'm sure you would like to know. What are the qualities of those who would be granted entry into paradise? So he responded very clearly. He says two qualities will make people enter Jannah. Two qualities. Obviously, these are the two most important qualities. They are interconnected. And at the same time, all other beautiful qualities are connected to them. What are these two qualities? The consciousness of Allah and good character. So some people will enter Jannah because they have Taqwa Allahi. And others will enter Jannah because coupled with Taqwa Allahi, they will be having Husnul Khuluqi. But the best explanation I've heard is that Taqwa Allah, if it is correct, will automatically lead you to Husnul Khuluq. Husnul Khuluq referring to great character and conduct your behavior, how you treat people. One might ask, what is the connection between the two? Yes, a very good question. The connection is Allah created you so you owe him something. And Allah created the rest of creation who are your partners in creation. So you owe something to them because you share the same creator. Just like Allah made you, He made everything else and He made everyone else. The rights we need to fulfill are not just the rights of fellow human beings, but of the fellow creatures that have been created by the same maker. So this is why it's important for us to recognize something known as Hukukullahi, which means the rights of Allah. You fulfill your salah, you abstain from sin, for example, you would like to uh, give away your arms to the poor, for example, the zakah, we're speaking about the fasting and so on. 
Some of these are only and solely Allah, which means they are the right of Allah. Allah alone, no fellow human being or other creature is connected to it. And some of them, a fellow creature is connected to it. And there are some where the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone have rights to be fulfilled, which would make a person closer to Allah by letting them earn rewards as well as making them better in terms of purifying them. I give you a simple example. If I have a lot of wealth and I've given my zakah, Alhamdulillah, my duty unto Allah is fulfilled. Allah is the owner of all wealth. Allah is the one who gave it to me in the first place. In fact, Allah is the one who gave value to the stone by his will. If you look at gold and silver, what is it? It's dug from the ground. Who gave it value? It's Allah. There was a time when platinum was not even known. Then it came about and its value became higher than gold. Who gave it that value? It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who chose that. But then its value began to drop if you are following that. However, the point being raised is all that belongs to Allah. It was there before we came and it will remain after we are gone. So I've given my zakah and then I see people who are still struggling and suffering. What happens? I start giving over and above the zakah, reaching out to others because I would like to see them. I would like to see them with, with some ease in their lives rather than difficulty. I want to try to alleviate their suffering, knowing that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man nafasa an muslimin kurbatan min kurabi dunya, nafasa allahu anhu kurbatan min kurabi yawmi al-qiyamah. Whoever helps a fellow Muslim uh, and eases one of their issues or problems or difficulties helps to create ease for them in the dunya, Allah will create ease for that person in the akhirah. And there are other narrations that extend beyond the Muslim to all mankind. Khayrun nasi anfa'uhum lin nasi. The best of mankind, the Prophet wasallam says, is he or she who is most beneficial to the rest of mankind. Pause for a moment and ask yourself, how am I benefiting the rest of mankind? That would help you to answer many questions. A lot of us would probably, if we were honest with ourselves, we would have to admit that rather than helping the rest of mankind, I am a problem. I create difficulty for those around me. I become jealous. I become hurtful in the way I think and I speak. And I become very hurtful in the actions that I have when it comes to those around me. So rather than helping them, we are harming them. This is why the scholars and the ulama have always taught us that if you cannot benefit someone, the minimum is don't harm them. For me, the best person around is he who has not harmed me. That's enough. That's actually a lovely person. Such a person I have time for. They have not harmed me. Because don't expect everyone to benefit you. But you need to ask yourself, how did I benefit the rest? If you haven't, please, my brothers and sisters, make an effort. Start with those closest to you and then go beyond and try to reach out to those whom perhaps you are not even connected to in terms of blood relation or in terms of interaction on a daily basis. Go out and reach out to people whom perhaps you don't even know. You may be able to reach out to those you will never meet, sometimes by donating something, sometimes by a good message, sometimes by any way that Allah has made easy for you. So my brothers and sisters, if you develop yourself, not only is that a quality of leadership, not only is it a quality of enhancement of the unity in the ummah and for mankind at large to be able to feel the sense of belonging to the species, but over and above that, it is a means of your entry into Jannah. Remember this. And this is why with the same hadith, the Prophet ﷺ was asked the opposite. What is the opposite? These were two qualities regarding entering Jannah. What are two qualities regarding entering hell? What are the qualities of those who will be entering hellfire? We want to know because we want to protect ourselves from these qualities. And you know what he said? Two things will make people enter hellfire. Most. Al-famu wal farju. Do you know what those are? The mouth and the private parts. If you take a moment, it is connected to what we said earlier. If you have taqwa Allahi, it will protect you from both of those. And if you have husnul khuluqi, you will never use your tongue to harm someone. Never. 
So it's a powerful narration. If you take a look at both sides, it will develop you as a human being. You become a person who lives so beautifully in your own home. I know some people will come across and say, I try to be the best, but my family members do not make it easy. Well, I tell you, your challenge is far more difficult. And guess what? The day you get your results, they will be, they will be really, really of a very high standard. I tell you why, when you are at a college like this one, for example, when you are in the first few years, your examinations are easy. You might sail through them. And as you go beyond into the higher years, your examinations become more and more difficult, but you embrace them because you know if it is not for that, I will not get the certificate that I am so much in need of. So if you want Jannah, sometimes Allah makes you bear the sabr because he says, إِنَّمَا يُوَفَّ الصَّابِرُونَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ Among so many verses, one of them is, Indeed, the reward of the one who bears patience will be given to him or her in full without a limit. Without limit. There's no limit to it. بِغَيْرِ hisab, No account. Meaning it's just going to go on and on. So you bear the patience. Allah wants to give you Jannah and you want to get out of the situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. I know life is difficult, but I also know that development of character and conduct will help us go through the difficulties of life in a way that we would be at ease and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be pleased. We ask Allah to make it easy for us. My brothers and sisters, I've chosen to speak about this for many reasons. A lot of us, we might have knowledge, but we lack in character. We lack in conduct. We lack in the way we address people, the way we look at others, the way we treat our students and the way we treat our compatriots and colleagues. And I know you may be students as well. And at the same time, as you grow older, you will witness people of various inclinations, people perhaps who think otherwise, people whose character is not befitting even a human being, people who promote violence, hatred, extremism, and so on. We need to be far away from anything negative, and we need to be upon the straight path, the path of those whom Allah has favored. Not the path of those who have gone astray or those who have earned the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for this reason, the most powerful dua or supplication that has been made, that can be made, that we have to make, that we do make, did you know, is المستقيم, guide us to the straight path. That's what it is. It is incumbent upon me to read Surah Al-Fatiha for my salah. For my prayer, my five daily prayers, it is compulsory that I read Surah Al-Fatiha. Why? What is in the Surah? In it, there is a declaration of the greatness and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In it, there is a declaration that I believe that Allah is the owner of the Day of Judgment. In it, there is a declaration that I will not worship anyone but Allah. And in it, I make one supplication only. I'm asking Allah one thing alone. And I repeat that so many times every single day. I'm asking Allah, oh Allah, guide me to the straight path. The path of whom? If Allah wanted, the surah could have ended exactly there. sirat al mustaqim, And we would all say, Ameen and go down. But he continued to explain so that we know and realize that the path that Allah has chosen is not just any ordinary path. You need to ask Allah for guidance guidance upon the path of whom those whom he has favored not the path of those who have gone astray nor of those who have earned the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how does a person go astray through al-famu wal-farju and obviously the lack of taqwa Allahi and the lack of husnul khuluqi it's one way of looking at things one might say okay there is a sin that is far greater than that and that is shirk to be honest the term taqwa Allah already excludes shirk completely it's something far away. We're talking of people who are generally Muslimin. They have surrendered to a certain extent. All we want to do is develop positive, positive development. This is what it is. My brothers, my sisters, no matter what you have achieved religiously, no matter what you have achieved spiritually, no matter how high your character and conduct is in terms of value, there is always room for improvement. Never ever for a moment think or believe that now I'm okay and I'm done. Because that is when we start sliding. That is when we start dropping. 
we need to continue nobody ever from amongst us will achieve perfection perfection is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for those whom he delivered it to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but the rest of us human beings Subhanallah, we need to continue, keep trying, develop your character, conduct, control your anger, control the bad qualities that you have, control the lusts and desires that may be haram, control them completely. How you use your devices, mobile, the internet, so on, control it completely. Try and become a person who uses it to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not one who uses it to pave their path to a place besides heaven. Besides Jannah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. My brothers and sisters, it's important for us, very important. Once we have controlled ourselves, once we have tried our best to put controls to the evil of our own nafs and our own soul and our own desires, we need to also develop how much of good deeds we do. In fact, some of the scholars have recommended something beautiful. They say, if you have a bad habit and quality, what you need to do is, while you are eradicating that bad habit, you need to increase the amount of good deeds that you are engaging in. So your salah increases, your tilawa and recitation of the Quran increases, your adhkar increase. The time you spend trying to understand the Quran and the sunnah and learning the deen will increase. The, you need to participate in reaching out to other people, charitable deeds and so on. Why? The reason is the more you do good deeds, the less time you will have for bad deeds. You start feeling good about yourself when you do good deeds. Sadly, shaitan makes us feel good when we do bad deeds. We get excited. A person has an affair. A person has a haram relationship. A person, for example, is busy stealing or whatever else. They get excitement because they see temporary pleasure. And this is where failure lies. The temporary pleasure comes with depression. It comes with sadness. It comes with so much of negativity in the short term. But when we start achieving pleasure by reaching out to others, by controlling ourselves, I was angry. I was really, really upset. And I wanted to shout and swear and scream. But I remembered that taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi is extremely important. So I controlled myself and I just smiled. And that's what I did. We know people will talk bad about you, every one of you, including myself in our lives. The more they speak bad about you, the more you need to calm down. The more you need to understand, don't react the way they have acted because then you become similar. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the kuffar and the munafiqeen. And Allah says, they would love that you join them in their disbelief so that you can be similar in terms of degradation. Being low. Someone swears you, you swear them back. What's the difference? Someone swears you, but you smile. You make a dua for them. You're worried about them. You're concerned. I'm not saying give the next cheek to be slapped. No. But what we are saying is think carefully, apply wisdom, apply character and conduct of a Muslim, the way you react needs to be something exemplary that will pave your way to Jannah. And this is how we will be able to improve the image of the of the Muslimin across the globe as well. What has happened today? Yes, we are Muslimin, but a lot of the times it's just by name. It's just by name. And sometimes Muslimin, but we lack in the way we resolve matters such that we create two problems out of one. We will always have dispute, remember that. We will always have difference of opinion, remember that. It's how you react that will distinguish you from others. Remember what I've said. We will always disagree on so many matters. It's how you react that will distinguish you from others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us. Brothers and sisters, these are absolutely important words. This advice is for myself to begin with. And really, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me the ability to practice upon it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help me improve my own character. May He help me improve the level of taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us arrive on even the lowest of levels. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us to the path of goodness thereafter. And the same for every one of you and those who may listen to this later on. My brothers and sisters, here we have a beautiful hadith. Imagine if we have extracted so many gems from one hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What if we had to study many a hadith? Imagine. What if we had to implement them in our lives? It would be amazing. 
it would be unique. We would be absolutely content. Nobody has ever told you that you will not have problems in your life. You will not have difficulties and obstacles. If that was promised to anyone, it would have been promised to Muhammad ﷺ, but it wasn't even promised to him. He had obstacles, he had hardship, he had difficulty, because that is how you get close to Allah. But Allah promises you that if you are a true believer, you will always be content and you will understand, this is my share of difficulties that I have to go through, subhanAllah. That doesn't mean you shouldn't deal with a problem when it comes in your direction. No, I'm just clarifying that. But what it does mean is, there are certain instances whereby you will have to go through certain things. You will do that because that is your share of problem. This is why the hadith says, Ajaban li amri mu'mini. You know, the affairs of a mu'min, of a believer are amazing. Ajab, they are strange, strange in a good way. Why? Because when goodness comes in the direction of a believer, the believer is thankful, so it's good. When I achieve, I don't become proud and arrogant. That is a powerful point. Remember, if you become the richest person on earth, you need to be the most humble. If you become the most successful person, if you are a very knowledgeable person, you're a very handsome or pretty or beautiful individual in terms of looks, if you have so much of fame, for example, if Allah has blessed you with whatever else, remember you, that is your test. It is such a big test. You need to remain humble and you need to constantly remind yourself you belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to prepare for the day when you will enter the grave. Nothing will come to your assistance besides by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is something extremely important. And the other part of the hadith, the Prophet wasallam says, when hardship or difficulty affects or is inflicted upon a believer, he or she bears patience, is persevering or practices restraint, depending on how you want to translate the term sabr. So it is better for them. Hardship came in my direction. What do I do? Restraint. I need to know how to react. What else do I do? I need to persevere, continue in my good ways. Someone, as you're doing good, they come and they pass remarks about you that this person is this, this person is after name and fame and perhaps money and women. Does that distract you to the degree that you stop doing your good work? In that case, you've had no sabr. Sabr also means to persevere. They will talk about you. They will lie because they've lied about someone better than you. They've lied about the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They lied about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Guess what? Similar lies. If you take a look at what people would generally say about anyone who is successful, those are similar things they've said about Muhammad wasallam. Not very different. Why? Because Allah wants you to succeed. Allah wants you as part of your test to persevere. If you stop throwing the gloves and walk out of the ring, do you know what? It means you were never cut for it. You've given up. Someone says, for example, imagine I'm reading Salah. And I go into Rukur and I try to make my back as straight as possible because that's the Sunnah. And two people are nudging each other on the side and I happen to overhear it. And what happens is they say, look at this guy showing off. And I decide not to read Salah again. How foolish is that? That is the most foolish decision because so what if they said that? If I know them, I can tell them, brothers, please don't say this or I can ignore them. But I do not give up good because of what people are saying. Otherwise, I, have, I will not succeed. Similarly, when it comes to a hardship and difficulty that comes in your direction, whether it is in your life as a brother, as a son, as a wife, as a husband, as a parent, difficulty and hardship comes in your direction. Don't run away. Face it in the best possible way, in the best possible way with goodness. Yes, if the situation happens to call for you walking out, you may do so if that is the best possible way. It's not wrong, but you need to remember to bear sabr because that is how you will achieve contentment. There are people who earn so much, but they are not content. And there are people who earn very little, yet they are so happy. I'm sure you've heard of these examples. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. May Allah open our doors. Once again, I call on myself and yourselves to develop taqwa Allah, to become conscious of Allah. Be mindful of the day that you're going to meet with Allah. And remember, there are deeds you need to do that are secrets between you and Allah that are good. The reason is all our sins, we've committed them in private, right? We, we would be embarrassed if we were 
to be exposed. When we commit a sin, we don't want the world to know the sin. So similarly, when you come on the day of judgment to present your deeds to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't you think it's a good idea to have a few good deeds that nobody knows about? Just you know and Allah knows. How's that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to achieve that. No one needs to know all the good that you've done. Keep a few good secrets as well. And you don't want anyone to know you did this quietly and you're gone. That is a point worth thinking about and working towards. May Allah make it easy for us all. The day we meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may we not be embarrassed. Similarly, work on your character and conduct. Work on the good use of your tongue. You know the, the, the tongue, إِلَّمْ تَشْغَلْهُ شَغَلَكَ بِالْمَعْصِيَةِ if you do not occupy it with the goodness of Allah, or should I say the obedience of Allah, it will occupy you with the disobedience of Allah. Similarly, if you don't occupy it with the dhikr or the remembrance of Allah or good words, it will occupy you with bad words. So remember, whenever you open your mouth, ask yourself, these words are going to be held against me or for me on the day of judgment. What should I do? And if you've made a mistake, don't lose hope. There is always tawbah. Tawbah is the door of tawbah is open for as long as you're breathing and alive and well. For as long as you haven't got to the point of ghargara. But what you also need to know is don't rely or don't use the excuse of tawbah to commit a sin. People say, you know what? Ah, I'm just getting this thing done. But inshallah, once I'm over, I'll, I'll, I'll go and cry to Allah. I'm going to go for Umrah at the end anyway. So let's just commit what we have to. And when we go for who knows? You may not go. Who knows? You may die before that happens. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So become conscious of the tongue. Become conscious when we say of the private parts, I'd like to actually take it before we even get to the private parts. Let's develop morality in our lives. That's probably a broader term. Become people whom when you look at the opposite sex, you do not just look at someone who's a sex object, astaghfirullah, but rather you look at them as respectful human beings who deserve respect and honor, dignity, those whom we need to fulfill the rights of, those whom we need to look up to, that they will be proud of the Muslims, brothers and sisters to say, I have a family who doesn't abuse, who doesn't misuse, but rather they care for, they respect, they stand up for, and they are reliable, honest, honorable gentlemen and sisters in Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that honor and dignity. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir al-muslimina fa astaghfiruhu innahu jawadun kareem.